a bit like a clown car where the old doors fall off. I suspect this hasn't got a lot holding it on. Right, there we are, we're off. Right, we've got this stripped down. Um, so we've got everything off it, looms out, pretty much all componentry off it. Uh, it's still got the doors on and the door handles and so on, but that sort of suits my purposes at the minute to keep them like that. And I've got the boot hinge on um, again because it keeps the boot in one place. But I talked about how we've got to get into this thing and, and deconstruct to uh, enable us to get to various areas that are going to need a lot of attention. So with that in mind, I've decided to take the whole front clip off and I think I'm going to take the whole rear clip off now I've had a good look. You remember that problems with the um, balance area and all that tar in it? Well, <laughs> I think that's why we take it off. So that's what I've been doing. I've been drilling the spot welds out on this wing. Um, and we ought to take the door off. But to take the door off, we've got an issue. So um, <laughs> as per normal with this car, there's um, more to do, more problems. So if you come over this way, and I'll, I'll, it'll, um, you'll see what we're doing. Right. So we want to undo the door, which means we've got to undo the door hinge. Now, door hinges, the bolts are there and there and there, and correspondingly on the bottom the same place, effectively. But someone's welded a plate over it, so we can't get to them there. We can take them off from the door hinge end, because it's on the ramp, I can't get it that much, I can't open the door that much. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take a pattern off another car, off the door of another car and drill the holes out. All this is gonna need sorting out and restoring properly. Um, plus, you know, you see this has been hacked away where someone's put a speaker in it or something. I wanna re restore this door frame properly and sort all this out uh, anyway. So um, in light of that, let's get that sorted out anyway. So, and it'll make my life easier because I don't like taking the hinges off on the A post every time you rehang the door. It's a lot easier to do it this way and I will be moving the door on and off for various reasons at this point. So we'll have to go and have a look at the other car and um, take a pattern off that and then drill this one out accordingly. So let's go and have a look at that. So here we are. These are the corresponding holes. So we'll take a pattern off that, transpose it onto the other one, and then we should know what we're doing. So let's do something like that. And um, you'll see what we've got. So if I line this up and sort of bring it over like that, give us an idea of what we're doing, and that'll give us something to work to. There you go, posts have dirty fingers and it leaves a mark on it. But yeah, we'll, we'll just do something like that gives us a rough idea of what we're dealing with. Um, if we can get this to roughly the right shape, we can um, we can um, cut this out and use it as a pattern and transfer it onto the other one just to get an idea of what we're doing with. So if we do something like that. So much like how you'd make gaskets up, we can tap it around here to give us an idea of getting an impression of where things are. Right, well that gives us something to work to. And that'll give us an idea of a good pattern. There we are, a bit big these old um, dressmaker shears, but they're, uh, they're very good. But they'll do the job. Right. Okay. It's a little rough, but it's uh, just for the purposes of what we're doing. This will this'll suffice for now. And then we can um, transpose this onto the other door. And then we can start making some holes and see what we got. So back to the other car um, 
these old sharpies and then we should be able to work out where we need our holes now quite while that's been plated over I don't know at this stage and I'm purely doing these just to gain access to the door hinges you know this whatever's gone on on here I will remove it and sort it out properly you see it looks like it's um, something nasty has been going on here you know we've got we've got issues here with rot but when this is all blasted and cleaned up we can work that out properly but this is just purely so I can get to those those um, and undo them and then I can get to towards the, you know to doing the wing so let's see if we can't drill it out now I've got one of these Christmas tree cutters um, but I'm not sure how useful it's going to be it depends how far I can get before I hit what's behind it now that one will be all right but this one I'll hit the bolts before I get you know if I do the corresponding so this might not work I might have to um, rethink this idea but let's try it let's see what we got we'll soon know what we're dealing with a lot of filler in there as you can see so here we go let's get into this one as well it's the amount of filler in there see that didn't go far into there before it bottoms out which leads me to believe we're not going to be able to use that Christmas tree cutter on it I'm gonna have to work out another way of opening this up Right, we'll try it on this one, this side, see what we got. And I suspect it's not going to do what we need it to do. We might be all right here, but it won't be all right there, if you see what I mean. I think that's bottoming already. So. Be able to just sort of try and elongate it with it. Yeah, we can see them both. Right, there we are. So we can get them undone, get the door off. And so we'll neaten all this up later on, but um, yeah, we've got to put the door skin on it yet, so there'll be plenty more to do on it. So I'll find something to undo that with, and we'll have a get the door off and have a bit of access. See, um, see what we need to do to get the wing off. Let's get sorted out. So. There we are, should be able to get that off now. Bit like a clown car, where the old doors fall off. There we go. Right, and then if we get, 
there's some stuff to look at in here let's get it underneath a decent bit of light and we'll have a look at this but there's um there's some stuff to see in here actually um <laughs> more of the sort of silliness that's been going on with this thing so if you can see down in there if i light that up can you see all this might pay to come in from above somewhere this is all fiberglass you might want to look down through in there and sort of see it you see that a shot of that it's all fiberglass this sort of like wedged in here a load of yeah, and then there's there's some metal they put in it so that's new metal you can see that's been sort of um uh it's galvanized but it looks i'm assuming it's galvanized it might not be it might be just sort of what's left of all this sort of fiberglass on it but yeah there's the original door what's left of it and there's the new bit they've let in and then they covered it with all this stuff to sort of neaten it out anyway so we got we got our work cut out with this and then of course we can see you know down in here where we've um, had to cut that open which we, we know what we're doing with that don't we but you can see there it's um it looks like the plate ends there i'm assuming they've plated straight over that um bit silly really because it's very difficult to hang the doors when you've when you've got that covered over um so you can undo the hinges on the a post but really you want to be able to do it here as well um you know to adjust the door gaps up so yeah i don't know quite what's been going on there but anyway more the same you know what this car's like we've got we've got plenty of that to deal with haven't we um but anyway there's the door off but we're going to keep the handle and the, and the door striker and stuff on it because i still want to be able to shut the door properly to check gaps and things at the minute so what i want to do now is i've been drilling these spot welds out through here along the top so i'm drilling them out and just splitting them so i've got to do that and then i've got to clean the edges up on the back of this here which is why i've opened this up and see what we've got holding it on there so it should um to be welded along here spot welded through here so there should be sort of spot welds through here which i'll have to clean this up first to find them and then there's our hinges as i say so yeah that's it um so yeah so what they've done is they you'd have to get to these to remove that but you know you can only get the door open so far so you can barely get at them you can get them now when you open it like that but you never get the door that far open the door only normally comes to about there so you really struggle to get to them so i don't know what the hell they did there you know if they did it when the door was on it doesn't make any sense i don't know what's been going on but anyway now we've got this off we can see a big lump of weld in here but you remember there's all this before when we looked at it when we did the first review we got all sorts of problems in here and stuff so we're gonna we're gonna find all sorts of stuff here and then of course since then when we first looked at it we had all these trim in here didn't we you can see there's a weld through here a bit let in there so there's a load of stuff going on in there and yeah there's all sorts but um let's see if we can get this wing off i think is probably the way to go well actually i'll tell you what whilst we're in here <laughs> look at this sort of stuff so yeah we can see well i've been stripping it out we've got all sorts of rust problems here we're at the bottom of this there it's all sort of missing um yeah so there's issues there and then over here they've put a plate in there on that bit someone sort of put a plate over that so there's going to be quite a lot of good stuff going on here and i thought that was quite fun see this little thing in there that little see if you can get a good shot of that there's a little screw in there well that's what would hold the pinna batch on the, the little sort of little sort of crest that you have on the outer panel there and it's not there the crest <laughs> but the fastener's still there so it makes you wonder what's going on with that you know um obviously the hole's there for it and the, and the fastener's still there but no badge on the outside so they obviously just filled over that and left what's left of the faster in there i mean unless there's a badge underneath there underneath all the filler you never know we'll find out in due course right okay i need to get some more tools right i just got to run the little whizzy wheel around here to see if i can see any spot welds and then i can drill them out
So, the purpose of that is to see if we've got any spot words. I think we might have one there. I don't quite know what we've got here. We'll find out. And this is, this is where the lower wing's been let on. There's the weld, and there's the lower wing. And it seems to be that thick and thinner, filler, doesn't it, from there onwards. So I don't quite know what all that's about, but that's all going, that's all scrap. We're gonna get, cut the router off and get rid of it. So, um, not sure what we're doing with that edge now. I can't see much to, to deal with. I'm not quite sure how it's fitted. So we'll have to, we'll have to, you know, get to that in a minute. But I think we've got, what's the remains of a spot weld there? Job to say, job to say with that. I'm not gonna concentrate on that in the minute. Let's concentrate on the top and the rest of it. Um, <clears throat> might be the way to do it. Once we get this sort of moving up here, maybe it will sort of show we can sort of stress that a little bit by tweaking it and see what it's doing. It might give us an idea because I can't really see what we're going to what we're going to gain there by drilling anything out. Um, I mean, it might be a skim of lead over that. Um, not really sure at the minute, but it hasn't, it hasn't sort of become too illuminating of where the welds are. But anyway, let's carry on with this then. I think um, trying to split this one. So. Um, yeah, so what we were doing, I was, I was drilling out the spot wells. I've been doing that just before we started our filming today. So I was, I was drilling all the spot wells out. And then I was just putting this little scraper through here to relieve it. So, I've, so you see, this is where I've drilled through all the spot wells. So what I did, I ran the grinder over it, which left the little low spots where the spot welds are. And then I'm just using this to just tweak it to split it. So I'm just sort of, you know, going through there. So I've got it, I've got it moving along most of it, but I've got to finish the rest of it. Um, so I'll do that in a minute. But before I do that, we want to work out where, you know, because we're going to have to cut it somewhere to get it off. So remember I had that factory wing. So by looking at that, will give us an idea of where the, the original weld was, of where we're going to want to cut it. So, we got that sort of piece there. So it's going to come around the corner a bit and then go across something like that. And then we've got this area here. It must join through there, which is, is just sort of above this indicator area, isn't it? It's around there. So looking at that, it's through there. So we're going to cut it through there and through there. So that just gives us something to work with. Gives an idea of what we're dealing with. Um, you know, so I can cut it roughly where the factory did and then I can tidy the edges up and so on accordingly. Um, best to make these cuts as neat as you can, really. So, the old stripey and I get a ruler and we'll put some marks in it ready for when we're going to saw it. Um, right. No, keep going, it's fine. If you want to just keep going. I'm just going to mark these up then we can cut. So there we are, so we have one of these. Um, so there you go, it's something like, so it's not straight is it, it's at a bit of an angle. Um, something like that, so what's that give us? It's just gonna take a guess at this really. So let's have a look. So if we went straight off of there, down that leading edge of the thing, if we take that straight to the end, um, that gives us sort of roughly intersects with there, doesn't it? And then that is, is a bit wider than that. So if we go with something, that gives us something to work with, doesn't it? I reckon. So that, that, that sort of taking that as a datum, running straight up to there gives us that one. And then we've got to come back to here. So I guess if we were doing that, and then went like that, it's about 35 mil, doesn't it? So let's do something like that. It should put us in about the right place, wouldn't it? Um, so with that in mind, we were going off here. And we were saying that if we took it straight to the end there, that's that one. And then we were saying to go off somewhere like that. Um, It's about 35, wasn't it? So it goes to somewhere like that. So that should be about where we want to cut. 
I know this isn't that scientific, but it's, you know, we've got to do something. And we're not going to know where they welded it. We can't really feel much under here because it's all covered in stuff. And then we were going the same on the, um, from that lower indicator, weren't we? So if we, if we went off the crease line, so we know that's the, that must be the indicator cut out. But if we just check that, so if we went 25 on that end, and off that crease to here to 85, that should give us what we want, shouldn't it? That's assuming the crease is in the right place. It's probably made of filler and isn't, but there we go. Um, so we were saying about 85 on that. And we were saying 25 on here, which is, it's actually below what we've got there. So if we went from there up to, yeah, I mean, we'd be going from there sort of across to here, wouldn't we? We'd be wanting to join that across to there, wouldn't we? So I guess if we did that, should be about right, shouldn't it? That gives us something to work with anyway. So we get a saw through there. I'll go and set a saw up. If we put cut cuts through there, then we should be able to maybe start tweaking the wing around and be able to lift it and move it. Okay. Right, let's get this cut off through here. And then we're moving in the right direction anyway. Oh, snap the blade. It's a hazard with these, snapping the little blades off. Let's try and do that without snapping this blade again. What happens is it goes through and then it hits the next bit of metal and it snaps it off. Which they're, not, they're not very good for it. They're a bit of a menace, these. Um, Right, we're through there. I'll put the ramp up a bit so I can go through that side. This headlight rim is probably just spot welded onto there. But trying to get them separated is going to be very difficult. So I might just cut the corner it off, then put it back on later on. Because I think that's going to be the easiest way around that. Um, it ain't going to take a lot to re-weld it back on, so I'll do that, I think. It's probably the quickest and easiest way around this. Right, so we'll go through here, hopefully, and then carry on with that one there, I think. We want to get these split, all these little spot welds, which I've drilled out now. Um, so with this, run this along there, I should be able to split them. I don't want to distort it too much, because obviously we, we, you know, we're going to save this and we're going to re-weld it all. Um, so I'll run through this and try and split some of these and see what we got. And... Uh, you know we're moving towards it we're moving towards getting the wing off but this could take a little while it's the nature of it it's not going to move that quick because these things never do you've got to be a bit careful because i don't want to ruin the thing taking it off that I'm just knocking it down so I don't get it too creased up and so I don't want to completely butcher the thing because we've got to get it back on you go too mad you end up 
splitting it all rather than actually going, you know, rather than breaking the spot welds, you end up splitting and tearing the whole thing, which is what we're trying to avoid. And also sometimes the spot weld goes over from the edge. So you're right on the very corner there, which you can't drill on very easily. So it's just holding out on there, but we, we'll get there. We'll work it a little bit at a time. See, that one's gone through the edge there a bit. Whether we can get beyond it, there you go. That's what you have to do, you have to go below it a bit. See, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, see, this one's sort of spread out all over here, which is why it's going to be stubborn through here, but it's because you've got this extra piece of metal. So you've got that piece and you've got this piece. And then, of course, this one's splayed over onto there. As it's melted, it's fused onto that one. So it's going to be tricky here to, to try and pick them up. And that's why they put a few more through here. You see, see these are fairly evenly spaced, sort of bigger gaps on these. And you see here they put a load through there. Well, that's because it's joining this one, this one, and that one. And you know, so the wings there, and then you've got this piece, which is is, is this um, channel here. Then you've got this little corner strengthener in as well. And that's why it's going to be a bit tricky to separate this one. get through here now. Right, by stressing this, we might be able to see what goes on with that. I suspect this hasn't got a lot holding it on. It doesn't feel like it. They're trying to give out. Right, there we are, we're off. So, there we go. So yeah, there wasn't a lot left of that top edge of there. So that's what should be across here. See, we were saying, we were looking in there before, see where that red paint was. If you go back to our original um, sort of appraisal video, you remember I point up here and say there should be a double skinned area here. And you see, you know, so there's what's left of that area. So there should be a piece comes across there, comes across like that, swoops around and joins on with there. And that's where it should be spot welded all the way on the edge. Well, it is spot welded along there. You can see there, that's what's left of spot welds. So, yeah, so what we got here is, uh, Someone sort of gobbed some MIG weld in there to fill a hole, you know, which is sort of corresponds with all this stuff here. You see there's a sort of build up of stuff there. And that's the inner skin, which is still attached, but it's all missing around here and it's been missing. You see where that paint's been flicked up in there? Well, that's because there's a void there. That should have a, you know, a piece there. So we've got to rebuild all that. So we've got some stuff to do, which is what we said anyway. We always said that, didn't we? Um, yeah. 
Right. Well, let's see what we got. This is as new to me as it is to you, because I haven't seen any of this like this properly, have we? So let's have a proper look at it. So missing that piece through there. Um, this is all pretty rusty, isn't it? But if we come round back here, so they've made that, they've sort of welded it along there and along here. It's not welded across the top, it's not welded there at all. So we've got a closing panel in here. And then this has all been let in, like I said. I actually have the big ducting tube coming in here to let the fresh air in. They put a piece in here, you know, there's loads of stuff going on here. See the hinges? See, that's where the hinges bolt on, that's the captive plate. That should, when you undo them, that's going to fall off. That should be held with a little captive retainer. Now it didn't matter if it falls off because it's not going to fall into anything other than just here. But normally that's all enclosed. So we've got that to deal with. Um, these just hold bits of wiring and things like that. They're nothing to worry about. In fact, I don't know, they, don't, they, they, don't, they do any, hold any wiring on this side. That's that ducting tube, you know, air duct that I'm saying about goes to the plenums here, which are missing. So, you know, it's, it's, it's actually, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. There's the original, you know, what's left of the original paint. But you can see why they rust, look, there's barely any paint, there's no undercoat there. Just a bit of the flicked on red and then that's the, that's sort of a bit of undersil being shushed up in there. So that's why we rust so bad, you know. Um, yeah, so yeah, so that's all factory that, none of that is, none of that is, none of that is, that's not there, that's been let in, that's been let in. So if we walk over to this one, uh, there's another one I'm doing a load of work on. But we've already done loads of remedial work on this. And here you see, if we crouch down a bit, there's our duct, this big duct piece here. And then you can see all this closing piece, this panel, this strange sort of triangulated panel. Um, and that, that captive nut thing that holds the hinge on, the hinge but is behind here. So you have to have it held on, otherwise it just drops down in this void and you've lost it. Well, of course, that car hasn't got any of this and it hasn't got that. So we're going to, have to make one of these and we're going to have to make all that. And obviously we're going to have to do all the other repairs to the, you know, to the, to the whole lot before. And then you see where that panel sort of disappears up there. You see the spot welds on here, completely different shape to what we've got on that one. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, we've got stuff. That's sort of what we've got to do in it. So that's what we was on about before. Um, so yeah, that's it. So this is just the beginning. We've got to have this whole front clip off of that wing and I'm thinking of doing something very similar with the back because we've got so much going on in there as well that I think the only proper way to do that is to take the, the front you know, clamshell off and the back as it were, um, take the whole lot off and then I can get to it properly, repair it and then we can put them back on. But you can see, you know, it's nothing like it, is it? No air hose, none of that closing thing. And then this is all completely different. So, you know, it saved it, it's still going, it's still on the road, <laughs> but it ain't now it's supposed to be. Um, and then there's one other thing I'm gonna show you quickly whilst we've got, um, well, actually a couple of other things over here I thought were interesting, following on from what we were doing last week. So you remember I was talking about, we took this cross member off, this was where we couldn't get the um, bolts out of. And we was having all that bother getting them bolts out of this. Um, and I said the engine mounts are sort of collapsed and it's starting to go. We can see how they sort of collapse down, how, you know, and all these splits in them. So they were starting to collapse um, and give out. You can see that one's very, um, very much a problem. You can see how it's sort of completely sort of trying to, trying to part company as it were. Um, well, because they've collapsed, you can see this witness mark on here, see that bright bit of metal there? And that sort of lump of, you know, congealed grease and dirt and stuff. Well, that's where the sump was actually jarring on the cross member. So at certain rev ranges, that was, that rev ranges, that was touching here and would have vibrated through the car. You'd have had a, you know, set up an acoustic and vibrated because these are collapsed. So I thought that was worth looking at and recording whilst we got, um, you know, got it like this, because of course, once it's cleaned that off, you won't know that's there. You know, we would barely see that, but I thought that was a good example of something there. Uh, and the other thing we had was we were looking at the discs. That one doesn't look too bad. So these are vented discs, these are the rears. Remember, I'm talking about them being bigger than the fronts or taller in profile. That one ain't too bad. I'll grab the other disc though, because this other disc isn't all that. Um, 
So that's the disc on the other side. So there we go. So that should be as thick as that on the inside edge there. Look, it's, it's got nothing left of it. You know, that, that, when that, you know, the idea of these vents is this, is, this is what you call vented discs. They allow the heat to dissipate through them quicker because you've got these air gaps. Uh, but obviously the thing is, because it's not solid, you've got a very thin piece of metal there you're dealing with now. So it should be at least as fat as that. You see, this one's worn a bit, you know, compared to that, this inner edge, but that inner edge is really bad. So yeah, I haven't seen one that bad for a long time. Uh, they will eventually wear through and then you just, you know, you have no material here and you just have the sort of ridges on it. But yeah, we're not, we're not there yet. So new discs are required. Um, and then just whilst we're about discs and rear brakes, that's your rear calipers. These are very quirky things on these. Um, have a similar thing, Lotus used it. Well, they're known for quirky things, aren't they, Lotus? They had a similar thing on, on the uh, uh, Elises and Elites and all that sort of stuff. Um, Esprit, the Esprit range, that was it, that type of thing. They had it, and then Peugeot 504 Cabriolets, they used to use this, this type of um, setup on it with these weird pressed, these sort of weird pressed caliper carriers. And then there's your caliper. <laughs> Bit that you does your hydraulics and that's your handbrake lever that, that you know pulls back that way and operates it but the quirky thing on these is you see you see that that's a piston in there and that's a piston in there and the brake fluid goes in there and expands them and they go that way so rather than having a piston working on this this one here pushing it that way and one pushing that one that way which is conventional calipers these work completely back to front so that one pushes there when you apply the brake because obviously what you're trying to do is clamp the disc together with the pads when you put your foot on the brake. So your disc is gonna be in there. You push that down, that piston goes out and pushes against here. That piston goes out and pushes against there. Well, obviously that would move this whole carrier in that direction, which then drags this one in that direction. You see what I mean? Because that's one piece. So they're really odd little things, you know. Uh, and I won't get into how the handbrake mechanism works because that's a minor disaster as well, the way they designed that. Dreadful thing, really. But there you go. But when they work, they're good. But <laughs> you say that about all fits, couldn't you? There we go. Um, so, well, we've got a long way to go just to get it stripped down before it... Um, goes off for blasting because I want to take the seals off as well I might even take these panels out um, so we're not there yet you know we've got the old, we've got you know, pretty much four wings to take off I think because I think it's the best way to do it but I haven't made my mind up fully about that but I'm pretty sure that's the way I'm going to do it um, so yeah <laughs> I think that'll do for tonight so uh, that's our um, you know we're still at the taking apart bit you know, nothing exciting, making things or putting things together, but you have to go through all this lot before you can even get to it. You know, uh, this is a bit like sort of um, clearing the land before you even start digging the foundations when you're building a house. You know, we're not even at that stage yet. We're just getting rid of all the, the, the stuff. Anyway, there you are. Enough of that. Say goodnight. <laughs> Until next week.